Hello everybody, welcome to a, another match of the Chalice Season 4 Round 16 match. What an unbelievably good team we've got here from Arzawain. Absolutely ridiculous. We've been we've been looking at this. 11 guard, 7 mighty blow, 6 stand firm, just loads of doubles. That's how he's fitted all the skills in. Loads of doubles. It's an absolutely crazy team. Saved so much TV. Has a movement 8, edge 2 up runner as well. And uh, yeah, Patrick Bolkin's team would look all right. It's you know, got seven guard and it's got a movement eight blodger. Looks all right until you sit like this is just a monstrosity, isn't it? And uh, hello, Hargrim, 007. I'm in your walls, Jim. <laughs> yep, we're just saying, how does Patrick Bolkin play this? And the answer is, <laughs> you don't, <laughs> you don't know. Answers on a postcard, <laughs> there is there is no way, there is nothing you can do, is there? I don't think like this is just hope for all the dice, isn't it? Just hope. Yeah. Hope for all the Hope dice. you get like early removals or something. Mm. You just skip that. Yeah, yes. exactly. Blitz, like, you know, a blitz on the kickoff result or whatever, like, you know, could have, if it's been short and he had something or. You know, because he's got this movement 8 Garrett, so the movement 8 Blodger can score like a defensive touchdown somehow. If, like, he fails pick up something. Or whatever. But he's not going to do because he's at 2 plus. So it's just. Thor, however, who was oh so wise, has said that, like, 90% of solid defences should just be skipped. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's fair. It, you know, because mostly, mostly you've set up like that with a reason and you could have set up any other way, but you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, what are you going to do? Most of the time, I agree. There is a hit back here, but it's hard to get because he's put the extra guy in and everyone's got to stand firm, so... Yeah, that's the thing, like, you know, to get that hit, he's got to give up an extra hit himself, haven't he? Which isn't... Yeah, this this is already a problem. Yeah. Oh. Gets a stun, though. I'm not sure. Well, I am sure I would have not dodged that out. I would have just left him in the ground. I think it's quite good versus dwarfs to leave players in the ground. It is. Mm -hmm. It forces their stumpy little legs to stay in one place, in a sense. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, like, your player, even though he's down, like, obviously it's not relevant in a mirror. But, um, you know, if, you, if, like, let's say you're like a human, your player, from where he is down, is still about as fast as a dwarf is from standing. <laughs> <laughs> Which is crazy, right? So, so it means that they yeah. can't they can't cage near there and stuff, and they they've got to think about where the down players are at all the times, and they just can't they can't deal with them. But like whereas if they were stood up, they could knock them down, <laughs> but they can't they yeah, can't exactly. actually deal with a with a with a down player that isn't standing up. Oh. Not. I mean, Patrick is not exactly being the luckiest of of people either. No. And he does need to be the luckiest of people. <laughs> I'm not sure about this. If you're going to stand this guy up just to get mighty blood, I hate that, honestly. I would, have, I would have banged in like two or three other guys to support him, so at least you're getting something. Hmm. Skull's out. He's skull. Yeah, I really don't. I really don't like this. Like, you're just stood here. I guess he's just going to always. Because it's a dwarf mirror, he's going to stay in the way and try and slow him up, but. That just seems like more and more inevitable loss. Do you know what I mean? At least like if you yeah. if you jammed in a bit over there, try and get some removals. You know, you can probably get overtime, right? Maybe because you've got movement to carry yourself. Yeah. So, so maybe just there, there might even oh no, there's stand from everywhere and no juggernaut. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say there might even be a chance for the one turn, but I just forgot that this team is an absolute abomination. <laughs> Yeah, it's insane. It's an absolutely insane team. So yeah, probably what what, what I'd be looking to do is um, just try and cause damage on his drive, and then yeah. score on mine any which way you can. <laughs> hopefully get to overtime. Hopefully win the toss, and then just bang it in. You know, in two or three turns as quick as you can, and then you know get to you know, and then it go, goes to kicks. I would say. I would say getting to kicks is almost like your best case scenario in this game because yeah, absolutely. He's got such a ridiculous 
completely overwhelming advantage in the, in the bash game. It's also he just took three stuns in a turn. That basically loses you the drive, anyways. Yeah, and he's still just standing up to take more mighty blow hits, which is not what I would have done. But these like Jeez. little hits, like these fringe hits, like you know, you could be getting these and like you no, know, maybe chipping somebody without just giving all these back in return. Is the problem? Yeah. Because eventually, maybe. armor ten is going to break. Yeah. If you hit it enough times. Yeah. I mean, of course, he might be able to stop the score. There's not, and you know, if you can stop the score, then you can win. So you know, <laughs> there's yeah. certainly a lot to be said for stopping the score. Um, it's not even showing what turn we're on. No, it's it's fucked. It's completely fucked since you know, since the the turn counter bug of like you know not seeing whose turn it is, like showing the wrong person's turn. So it, yeah. doesn't, uh, it it shows nobody's turn and then it shows the wrong turn and stuff. It's really terrible. At least this is this is turn four for Patrick Balcony, and it is actually it is actually turn four for Arzwin as well because Arzwin oh, okay. received. So it's right this time, but in the last one it was wrong. <laughs> turn four and we've made no forward progress. Normally mm -hmm. that would be a bad thing, but we've got movement eight, agi two, uh, runner. So who cares? Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Like, if this was a normal dwarf. Mirror, you know, then all like Patrick Bolton's done all right, you know, he hasn't had play anybody removed, has he? No, so he stayed mostly in front of him, but unfortunately, with the movement eight carrier, I just don't think this is going to be good enough. But I could be wrong. See, like, my my my. My, you know, state of mind would definitely be, uh, you know, feeling bad. <laughs> uh, I think I would have, like, if, if I was Patrick here, I would have mentally given up already. I wouldn't have mentally given up, but I would, I would be thinking, you know, the, like, Arzawain's got the inevitability, right? Like, it doesn't matter that I think I'm a bit, a bit better at Blood Bowl than Arzawain, right? That doesn't really yeah. matter. He, his team is is light years ahead of mine, if, if I'm Patrick Balkany. It's light years ahead. Yeah. And so, I feel like I just have to be desperate right from the start. And to be fair, he's somehow got a, got a one day on the ball here, hasn't he? <laughs> Stop the edge. Which doesn't make any sense. He hasn't got one D on. Oh no, he does have yeah. one D. Yeah. Like, that makes no sense. Well, that look, that's been a allowed. Full pal. Yeah. So you know, all credit Patrick Balcony there. You know, he used to, he played like you know normal defense, hard defense, and he and got then gets so screwed on the scatter. Yeah. But I mean, what a turn! Knockdowns. Great then, come on. Bunch of knockdowns. Pop the ball, and all of a sudden, Arzawain's in trouble. Turn six for Arzawain, and then he needs to recover. Yeah. Death is no good. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it paid off, right? He ended up with three on five over here. And so outnumbered him massively around the I think, ball. I think, I think that stems from a problem that Arzawain took very early in that he chose to go for a side switch instead of trying to pressure the side that he mm. was already heavily committed on. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I would have just tried to bulldoze through if I was Arzawain. Yeah, you kind of... That was a 4 plus dodge. Yeah, he's got break tackle, so... Oh! It was a 3. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't tell what skill icons these are. <laughs> this, like, I, I don't know, I think this is going to be like a hand, like a mitt. But it looks like a fucking bone or something, it's so weird. It's like he's just punching someone in the shins. Yeah, it's fucking weird. I really don't understand. Oh, so he failed oh. the pickup and it scattered to this guy. Who, who caught it? Yeah, but then he's lost it. So the ball's on the ground. The ball's clear of tackle zones. Clear. I guess we 3 plus with the blitzer for the pickup? Yeah. Unless you can Not maybe. Throwing a 1D. Maybe you can free the. Uh, maybe you can. No, maybe you can blitz and block and free the runner. Uh, so what I would have done <laughs> now of course doing it this way keeps this guard near the ball 
But this guard could have come down three, like four, blitz this guy, right? And then and then you could have blocked this guy up, and then that leaves him to go one, two, three, four, five, and pick up the ball. Yeah. Um, and then this guy could have been down there, and then he could have like GFI'd back as well. So he could have had the ball there on the, on the runner, and then you could have also got an, an extra hit over here as well, um, or you know blocked him and then moved him away. Oh, you can block him away and. So also with this blitz and then this block and this block, you can just move this guy to pick it up. Well, this guy's oh, it's passing ability down, isn't it? It's not agility. I thought that was yeah. agility down, but it's passing ability down. Um, yeah. But I would have tried to get it on the runner. Um, but this, you know, this looks fine actually. Yeah, maybe do this. Like block it's a, first. it's not like it's a bad line. Yeah, maybe, maybe you should have st start with that block. Um, you know, brought this guy in and started with that block or something. I don't know, but it doesn't matter anyway. Um, oh, he's okay, so he's blocked with him. No, out of yeah, I guess because he couldn't free him after the first block had gone. Oh, well, well, he's made a Kaz. Ooh, ooh. big Kaz. First blood to the to the rookie dwarf. Oh, there's a blitzer here. It's the blitzer here picks it up. Oh my god, and now he shovels off, so he's got a scoring threat as well. Oh my god, amazing. Okay, so this looks way better. This looks way better than my idea now. Fair play. <laughs> Fair play. The way, the way that, Bulk, the way that uh, Balkany did it as well, he probably prioritized the hit on the one runner that uh, Arzawain has with Mighty Blow. So if mm. that gets chipped and it's not a badly hurt, that's pretty good for the game. Because yes. it it forces out the apo and it's not guaranteed that it's going to come back. Like the odds are like what thirty percent? Thirty seven and a half. Yeah. Not very good odds. No. Oh wow, he's dodging with him to do the blitz. That's crazy. He gets it. I wonder if he should have handed off to him. Would have. I wonder if he should have done. Probably should have done, shouldn't he? Yeah. Well, Looking back. Patrick, uh, Patrick did the impossible and stopped the dwarf drive. <laughs> yeah. Outrageous. And he might Critical still mistake might from Arzawain. It was, yeah, yeah, that was poor from Arzawain. I mean, I, I know that Kalon, but <laughs> you know, he was, he, he didn't have the tackle. He couldn't like get two dice with tackle on the runner. So therefore, having that runner to uh, just score would have been pretty good, wouldn't it? But it looks like he's going to get another Runner chance. gets mighty blowed. Yeah. Boo, not even dead. Not even dead. Diced again. Yeah, maxing hits here is, is fair, right? Because it's not too likely that you get your uh, runner pick up and dodge here. The KO as well. Yeah. Got the pickup, got the it. dodge. Make the dodge. Oh my god. Oh, this is huge. Oh my god, the absolute dream. He's done it. Not only has he stopped him, he's scored on him. <laughs> and don't forget, he's also banged on the men's. Yeah, yeah, he's outbashed him. He's out There's only one him. bench, so if that KO doesn't come back. Yeah. Wow. He's only got one chance as well. Yeah. And you've got to say, it just stems from poor play from Arzawain, right? He allowed himself to be outnumbered, uh, you know, on this on the side with the ball, right? Like, even here, he's still got four players to two there, right? He still hasn't even rectified it, however, God knows how many turns later. He just, he yeah. just got himself skewed, got the ball hit. And then got turned over despite having loads more guard, loads more stand firm, loads more mighty blow. Mm. Wow, you must have been a while more ready. <laughs> yeah, well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Glorious rates. Welcome to Chalice Replays. An unbelievable uh, Patrick Balkany against all odds with a far inferior team has somehow turned over Arzawain and he's 1 0 up at the half and might be a man up as well. Isn't by the seams. Isn't, isn't a man up. Diced. 
utterly and completely diced. Comedy mega. But now he's just got to score, hasn't he? And he's won. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't even need to score. He just needs to make sure that Arzawain doesn't score. I think he has to score. Because, again, I still think Arzawain is so far ahead in team quality. And he's got a movement aid. Edge 2 plus guy. I feel like you're much safer banging it in than trying to, you know, hang on to the 1-0 win. I feel like if you try and hang on to the 1-0 win, he'll just overwhelm you. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. You definitely, you definitely attempt the touchdown. Yeah. It's just you don't need to score. No, true, true. Technically, you don't need to. But I kind of feel that he's in big danger of getting mm. turned over and scored on. A bit like a bit like the uh, you know the games that we had in the Super League with between the Orcs and the games between Strider and Diamond in the in the season two finals. Like um, yeah. in this kind of situation, like the defense is just look. <laughs> Look at the team! <laughs> you know, Bonkers. he just bases you up and you're like, you can't make two dice blocks and you can't move anybody. Like, it's just horrible. So, yeah, I how, feel... How like... can play? How can play? Mm. Which, to be fair, Azuane did do very early on. He based a lot of the men's and did cause some problems for Patrick. But he, he decided to go for that weird side switch and outnumber himself, which was a bit iffy yeah. yeah and then he left on a two dice on the ball yeah yeah it's not good on a scale of one to not good that was not good <laughs> <laughs> and yeah there we go loads of players in guard everywhere oh. enjoy your turn yeah I don't like that Patrick Balcony has stayed back here. Like, I get it. I get it, but it's it's hard, isn't it? It's like, because things aren't going to get better for you in the middle. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're just going to get worse. So I'd move it up, let him come into you, like, you know, harder one side, and then punch through and, you know, hope not to... Like, it's tough, obviously, because both of them have got a werewolf, essentially, right? Like, that's the horrible thing against Necros, is that it's yeah. really hard to make a break. Okay, they've got loads of shithead zombies, but you can't really make a break because they've got, they've got movement eight wolves hunting you down, and obviously both of these have got movement eight that can hunt you down if you try and break through. So it's, it's not so easy as it normally would be versus dwarves to make a breakthrough, but I think that's what he has to do. Well, as Diamond just played, there was, there was only two games that had been uh, on when I started the stream arena. Um, some good BB3. This has been it's been better from Patrick Balcony than it has been from Arzawain, I'll be honest, because Arzawain's holding all the cards. But uh, this half... And decided to uh, accidentally show the other side of his cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think this half... Like that one moron. Harder. Like that one moron in poker that obviously can't bluff or, like, keep <laughs> anything a secret. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's GFI'd. I have to do the GFI. <laughs> And now we've got a little bit of an opening here, right? There's a player here, there's three players here. There's a player here, could like, you know, you could one Dean, maybe dodge as well, so... I think we'll see the punches over here. And maybe a... Maybe a little push. I think he has to make a push, this is the problem. I think the stall... is going to be harder than the push. Yeah. I actually quite like this line that Patrick is taking, just keeping the ball carrier so far back and waiting for Arzawain to overcommit. Mm. I, I don't like it because it's resulting in multiple mighty bow hits every turn. So I would have I would have tried to just get it done. I would have tried to, um, you know, pile in, maybe take a Kaz or two. Um, but just try and, you know, like, do my best to just get bang it in two, three turns. Well, it'd be three turns, maybe even four turns. Oh, that's a fast score for dwarves. <laughs> oh, d imagine defensive, yeah. Imagine defensive in this matchup. Mm. If you're Patrick Balcony. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I guess the thing is, like, the good, the thing that Patrick Balkany has in his favour is that um, Arzawain has to, like, break through and, and, and counter score, right? So, you know, if, it, if his front line holds, it's not so bad. But. Because, front yeah, line has to hold. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, right? This is the thing. It's not easy from the blitz or don't. <laughs> there is no blitzes any turn. <laughs> That's the problem. The problem what is I it's don't, just not easy. What I don't like is how passive Arzawain's actually playing this. Like, yeah. There's no pressure. Yeah, to say this is turn four of, uh, of Patrick's drive, you would have thought Arzawain would have showed a bit more urgency. Maybe just waiting, you know, for the turn where he gets like a couple of stuns. But um, problem is, you could be waiting until turn sixteen for that. You could be, yeah. But you know, maybe, maybe it's right. Maybe it's right to not rush in. But you know, again, if I was if I was hours away, and I would have been playing more aggressively. Yeah, I'd be certainly been trying to push, push through to get the one one. But of course, so if I was hours away, I'd be one up at this point anyway. So. <laughs> 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 well, hey. Hey. <laughs> if I had more mighty blow than my opponent has guard <laughs> <laughs> literally every single outfield player has guard <laughs> mad it's an absolutely mad team this it definitely shows the um how do I say this nicely flaws in the ladder system currently hmm well, it's funny, isn't it? it? It's funny because, like, this amount of doubles is pretty ridiculous. Um, he's probably got less rerolls as well, right? And uh, he's got two rostered. Yeah. There's the pressure. There we go. Yeah. But then also, now is there a gap, right? Yeah. That is a big stun as well. Yeah, huge. So he has waited for the turn where he gets loads of knockdowns and stuns. <laughs> he just did the stuns after he after he said. <laughs> yeah, like this turn is a great like you know if you, if you've made these two stuns and all these knockdowns, now it's a great turn to run a guy forward. But he's put him this side, and and he's there. So you just have to run up here, don't you? There's no option. There's no option but to run up this side. I would say. Yeah. Patrick's in trouble now. Yep. Oh, I hate the follow. I yeah, I think, have, I think that should have. I think that should have been the blitz. Oh, he's standing on the. Oh my god, he's still stalling at the back. Oh, I hate this. Oh, I hate this. I mean, he can't reach, but now it's a bit. Oh, dead, dead, dear. dead, 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 dead. Paul fails. 37.5% chance it does not come off. And now the threat is massive, right? Because now the, the front line has completely collapsed. Yeah. So the turn, the miracle turn that Arzawain needed happened. And now the worst case scenario is happening for, for Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> It's so funny that maybe oh, he's yes. waiting for the turn where he gets Your a bunch of, bunch of knockdowns and a couple of stuns and he's literally got it after he committed. That's, so <laughs> That's pretty defend. funny. Mm, it's perfect timing. Four. Hello. Five here. Thank you very much. Staying fantastic for 57 glorious months. Level 1,000 knight in, uh, in chivalry. Two? Is that right? Something like that. Oh my god, double G if I attack him. Oh dear, it's over. See, it's over. And because he went run up here rather than like, you know, well, down here and just away, there's no way for him to go, is there? This is, this is grim. If this guy had not followed, he could have been here and he could have lobbed it to him. <laughs> Potatoed away. <laughs> G A Y T O. Oh, double G if I. And that's it. There really, there really isn't much you can do as as Patrick, you know. No. Like you're two men's down. 
your front line's collapsed. You've got a bunch of players in your backfield and nowhere safe to go. You basically just have to cross your fingers that he never hits 30% power. Yeah. It's over. Sing it's over. Yeah, classic hope for quad pushes. <laughs> well, also, he doesn't have any rerolls, right? He's only got one reroll left. But yeah, now finally he's getting the AB breaks. Yeah. He didn't get in the first time. But then he's making more blocks this half, isn't he? Because of this. You know, like, he doesn't have to protect the balls. He's just got 11 men just fight. And, you know, here we go. 2D on the ball with tackle. Instant I mean, power. gets the 30% anyways. Yeah. And the AV break. Not dead, dead, dead. Oh, he caught it. Yeah. Oh, no. It was a bug. Which turn Who's is to it? Say, Nobody oh, knows. Nobody knows what turn it is, Odo. <laughs> Who knows if, if anybody playing knew what turn it was. <laughs> See, because oh, it was turn it was, fifteen. Yeah, because it was Patrick Balkany's turn fifteen first, right? So now it's Azawin's fifteen, except his was already on fifteen when it was his fifteen. It's so, st and then they disappear. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's so fucked up. This is not Nath. This is the chalice. So now, yeah. So now, it, it's looking pretty over now, isn't it? Unfortunately for uh, Patrick Balkany. This looks like it's going. It is going to overtime. Yeah. And, uh... You need to get both of those KOs back as Patrick. Yeah. Otherwise, you're down to five guard, and then it's just going to become nearly impossible to play. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the, the disparity in, in skills is wild. Diced by the draw. Yeah. Just ended his turn, didn't even make 1Ds. Uh, he had a 1D there that he could have made, didn't do it, just ended his turn, and then Arzuin didn't even make a 2D, then he just scored, which is fair enough, right? He's got one reroll. I like the just scoring, because, you know, your best case the scenario is overtime. Oh, he's won the toss. Oh, yeah, your best case and scenario is overtime, and you, you've only got one reroll for overtime. Yeah, and none of the KOs came back, so now it's four guard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ten players. <laughs> Ten players, four guard, versus only ten guard, to be fair. Oh, only ten guard. <laughs> oh, nine guard. What? I didn't notice this fella, look. This little fella hasn't got guard. But, um, so only nine guard. Wow. <laughs> what a noob. <laughs> so, yeah, this is pretty... Pretty bad. Brutal. But he's al he's already messed it up once on offense before. <laughs> he can mess it up again. Yeah. It's not over till the fat lady sings. The hell are you calling fat? <laughs> Blood Bowl coaches. Chances are one of them, one of them, one of them's obese and one of them's like, looks like anorexic. So me. <laughs> and that's that's generally what Blood Bowl coaches tend to look like, isn't it? That is true. <laughs> Pick one or the other. There is no in between. No, not so much. That's true, Kalon. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, this is better from Arzawin the yeah, first half. Yeah, much better. It seems he's learned from his mistake. Yeah. A mistake you would thought you would already learn from many, 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 many games ago. Oh, well, now he's randomly basing, so I don't like it as much as I thought he was going to make the whole team together. 
but nope, he's just jamming in. I guess he's he's got such an advantage, that, you know, he might as well jam in there. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Kalon. <laughs> Flip me. <laughs> oh, that is brilliant, Kalon. Isn't isn't there a song about you two from uh, in Game of Thrones, or a song of ice and fire? I don't know, Jeff. I think there is. Just kill the little ones and score. Yeah. No. I don't like this random base. <laughs> like even if he's gonna blitz him, like just just like go down the middle and like use your blitz positionally. Like is he just trying to hit the mighty the the guard guys? You know? Like that that base looks like he's just gonna he's doing it to blitz with Mighty Roar, doesn't it? Yeah. Which seems garbage. And running back. I, I don't know, I just don't like all of this. I would have wanted to blitz him with Mighty Blow, block him, you know, bring some people over here, have the ball over here. Maybe he's a bit further back because they've got movement eight carry, but yeah, he is he's gonna blitz this guy, that's what I did that. News from the Davotational, Jim, uh, Dimmy came 34th out of 104. Oh, that's brilliant, isn't it, with Nurgle? That's like that's like finishing third with anything else. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty good result with Nurgle. Yeah. It's why I'd never use Nurgle in any kind of tournament ever. This was like the best tournament ever to use Nurgle, all right, is what they were saying. <laughs> they still did 34. Has the ball gone backwards? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's just, he's just like it's fair enough in a way, right? Because they've both got a movement eight guy, and like you don't really want to spend the place to cage it. Um, yeah. And you can just move back and then move up. So like I don't need it. But again, he's doing the same kind of thing of just spreading his team wide and trying to fight everybody instead of like you know focusing and moving forward. But he, he really is a banger. Yeah, he is. No, but a greedy banger. <laughs> But it gets the AV break on him. And now he now can he move up safely. How many kebabs for consume? Probably none or one, right? He's, he's all health. He's on this health kick now, isn't he, Dimmy? No, I think I think Hammers Andy won all three games on day one, and then didn't bother turning up on day two because he was gonna have to play for and He was like, "Fuck that." <laughs> 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 no, I don't know why, but I think he did. Yeah, I saw him called I out. Think, I have no idea why. I think what has happened is there were some dropouts. Uh, at least that's what Dementor posted on the Discord that there were some dropouts, and so to make it an even number, Andy sat out. Right. I would not. That do at that. least seems logical to me. Oh well, maybe you could have just had like an emergency, family emergency, couldn't have just done. That. Yeah. No idea really why he's dropped out, but I mean, I guess as the alleged TO, he could drop out, but that seems like not something anybody would want to do if they were on three and all. <laughs> so maybe just something real life happened, and that's why he pulled out. I doubt it would be because of fear of K Fog, <laughs> but that's a good narrative <laughs> to push, isn't it? <laughs> Fear of Big Kev. Very rational fear. <laughs> Kefogophobia. <laughs> How to be number one ranked coach in NAF, just never play Kefog. Okay, well now he's moved up, but can he can he cage it or is he gonna cage it? If he no, he can cage it. Not properly. I mean, it'll be two dice uphill no matter what. 
bulk and he does, right? Yeah, there's no, there's no, there's no chains on because everybody has done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what a nightmare team to play against. <laughs> it's horrible. Like this is something that would genuinely cause me nightmares. <laughs> I think you have to go for the uphill because you're not going to get anything better ever. No, you have to go for the uphill. Mm. <laughs> I'll see that heel turn. Is that what it is? You pull down to make the rounds even. That's that's a wild thing to do. Done it. I've pulled out of my own tournaments uh, to make sure that we were an even number. Mm. Well, I've, I also did it at the Danish Open after I'd lost like three games, so. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the difference, isn't it? You know, I'm sure Kalon was 0 3 when he did it. Three and all playing big Kev, I would I would find that very hard to pull out. I would find we, it very hard to pull out if K Fog was involved. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> we really just moved our ball carrier back to bang on the runner. Yeah, yeah. And stunned him, which by the way, if he hadn't stunned him, was one, two, three, four. Five. Oh, so one, two, three, four, five. GFI. It's three, three, two, two to one D the ball. It's easier. It's it's a three, three. Three plus block with a dwarf bl blitzer, because it's not got stand firm. Oh yeah. For yeah. the push, three plus. Yeah. Then you three plus dodge. Then you have a one D for a five. Yeah. Running all around the houses would would give you the blitzer recovery. <laughs> You power him to here, <laughs> and then the bounces to there. Oh, for the two and eight. Dodges away. Yeah, yeah, easy. Yeah, I didn't even see that. That's crazy. So yeah, what a lucky stun there from ours away, and that's outrageous, isn't it? What that is outrageous. so sloppy. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, Kalon. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Reddit. The best source of Blood Bowl information. <laughs> oh. He rerolls this 1D. Oh, it's a blitz just to base the ball. Oh, man. Boy, do I hate rerolling that to base the ball. I would have just not rerolled, honestly, and saved my reroll, thinking Arzawain's playing this so badly, he's going to give me another chance. <laughs> <laughs> like, as insane as his team is, he's played this really badly, I would say. Over, like, just because he's so far ahead, right? He's so far ahead, and he's just kept giving him chances and stuff. Yeah. I would feel pretty confident that, actually, I could play a bit more conservatively, as much as, like, before the game, I'd be thinking, oh, my God, I've got no chance, I've got no hope. This is so terrible, even though... You know, I think I'm better than him. Um, I'd be like, I've got no chance. Whereas now I'd be thinking, oh, okay, I, I do have a pretty good chance. <laughs> the chair with the mop on. <laughs> oh, man. I do believe this is what we in the industry call Jova. <gasps> he ran out of time. Do you know what? I watched this. I watched this um, live. So, uh, this turn, because I just wanted to see if they'd finished yet, right? And uh, I literally turned on this turn, and he literally ran out of time. So he had this guy no there way. ready to go one, two, three, four, and fill that square, and he ran out of time. And so he followed, which he probably shouldn't have followed, Anyway, right, if he, if he wasn't going to move this guy. But, yeah, he could have followed and moved this guy up and then been pretty safe. Um, but instead, he just ran out of time with this guy free. So, amazingly, Arzawain gets, like, another one day on the ball. <laughs> Did I say Arzawain? Patrick Balkany gets another one day on the ball. Yeah. Um... 
Uh, Witchcraft Gaming. Jeez. Let's just say that the ladder system is perfectly balanced. And that's why there's a skill disparity. Well, he's got two dice on the ball. Because he can come in with a, with a carrier. Yep. And then failed. He didn't have his reroll, and if he just saved that reroll from the from that one D, he could have rerolled that dodge and had two D on the ball. Oh man! So yeah, Azawin did give him an easier chance. <laughs> <laughs> we went from you've got to do the uphill here because you won't get get a better chance into he nearly had just an easy two D on the ball. Like that's crazy. Absolutely insane. Makes his dodge, makes his GFI, makes his GFI. Three two pluses, no reroll available, makes all three. Gets the touchdown. Wow. Now, now, Christopher, that is not what I said. I said the ladder was balanced. <laughs> well, this is the I'm thing, I'm trying right? to be nice here. <laughs> the thing is that they tried to... They, they banned randoms and everybody was like, well, banning randoms is shit. So then they unbanned randoms. But then they, oh my god, there's time. But then they made it a 1600 TV cap, which means farming ram randoms and cheating the cap massively efficient, right? Like, so, you know, if it just if there was no cap, there wouldn't be as much payoff to, to making this obscene 1600 TV team because you might have to face a 2000 TV Nurgle team, right? Which, okay, you'd still have this obscene TV team and, and Morg, but you'd still be playing like a 2000 TV team, so they'd have defensive and stuff, and they'd have like other things available to them as well. But now, they've basically forced hyper-competitive people playing loads of games, you know, who want to maximise their chances. That is the way you maximise your chances. Now, nobody's obviously forced into that, because you don't have to maximise your chances, do you? But... To maximise, oh my god, I hate exposing this guy. As much as like, you know, okay, this makes the, the score, it's got the score maybe better, but just have the whole line one square back and don't expose him to be blitzed. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. you want to win the whole tournament, don't you? You don't really just care about this round. Uh, Doom Fox, best solution, game cap. Put a cap on how many games you can play. No, best solution is just no, no TV cap. No caps of any kind. Let people play how they want in ladder, but then also have um, the Blood Bowl uh, Arena, right? Or the NAF, the NAF Arena. And what the NAF Arena is, you make a team according to rules that change each season, right? That's all automatically done and stuff, right? So you pick your race and then like you like make NAF team, right? And then you make a NAF team and it, you know it says right you've got you know four normals or whatever for dwarves. And then you make your team, and then you spin into other people who've made a NAF team, and with the same rules. And then you like, you know, that's all just done purely on Elo and stuff. And uh, and you know, like, and you what was it? You win twelve before you lose three or something, and and things like that. Yeah. And that's what you'd do, and that would be great. And then you'd have the you'd have the normal ladder for people who just want to play like you know open ladder, play as many games as you want, build whatever teams you want have fun in a completely limited environment and then a very strict environment for competitive um, and I think that's by far the best idea will they do it hopefully um, I'll message them I just I was gonna write it all out and didn't <laughs> yeah use use that influencer power you've got Jim mmm mm. it's funny I'm not an, I'm not a VIP but I you know I I'm allowed to message them, aren't I? So I'll message them and see what happens. I'm pretty sure if you started posting like sexy photos on Instagram, you'd start getting some attraction in the Blood Bowl community. Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I should. Uh, maybe I should make like a. Have you seen AI influencers, by the way? Oh my God, is that a thing? It's a thing. On fucking Instagram, there's like AI women with like you know half a million followers and stuff, and like all of all the comments on the pictures, I think they think they're real. Like, even There's though it's just no obviously way. an AI woman, they just, I think that people think they're real, because I guess, like, maybe they're, like, really fucking stupid. I don't know. There's just no, there's just no way. There's no way. <laughs> I refuse to believe it, Jim. Or maybe they're bots. I think, I think really stupid people. I think there's a lot more really stupid people than there are bots. <laughs> so I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on the bots. Jim, the research into this. <laughs> I, did, I couldn't believe it. Honestly, I couldn't believe it. I did. I, I read a thing on Reddit and I was like, nah. <laughs> and I was like, no, my God, it's actually a thing. Holy shit. Anyway, um, right. 
Well, sorry, that was much more interesting than Dwarf Mirror, but actually it was amazing, wasn't it? It was amazing. Somehow, Patrick Bolkady, you know, carved himself chances. Uh, Arzaway nearly threw away this massive advantage he had in team strength, uh, but it came out. Unfortunately, it went to the completely boring, predictable result, but it didn't play boring or predictable, did it? It was incredible. It didn't. And, uh, it, was a good, it was a good game for Dwarf Mirror. Yeah, yeah. The best a Dwarf Mirror can get. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you very much, Hargrim. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.